Borobudur. Historical notes during this. Borobudur Temple. About Borobudur. Location. Borobudur Temple is located in Borobudur Village, Borobudur District, Magaling Regency, Central Java Province. Astronomically it is located at 7 degrees 36 minutes 28 seconds south latitude and 110 degrees 12 minutes 13 seconds east longitude. The geographical environment of Borobudur Temple is surrounded by Mount Merapi and Merbabu to the east, Mount Sindoro and Summing to the north, and the Menore Mountains to the south, and is situated between the Progo and Elo rivers. Borobudur Temple was founded on a modified hill, with an altitude of 265 ASL. Building shape. The plan of Borobudur Temple is 121.66 meters long and 121.38 meters wide. 35.4 meters high. The building structure consists of nine terraces with terraces and a main stupa at the top. Consists of six terraces with square floors and three terraces of circular designs. The vertical division philosophically covers this level according to the current mainstream version, the Indian version. Kamadatu, Rupadatu, and Arupadatu. The vertical division technically includes the bottom, middle, and top. There are stairs going up at the four main directions with the main entrance to the east with a pradaxina. The stones of Borobudur Temple come from the river around Borobudur with the entire volume around 55,000 cubic meters, approximately 2 million pieces of stone. Findings History Borobudur Temple reappeared in 1814 when Thomas Stanford Raffles, the Governor General of England who became the Guardian of Indonesia, held an activity in Semarang. At that time Raffles received information that in the Kedu area an array of pictorial stones had been found, then he sent Cornelius a Dutchman to clean it. This work was continued by Kedu resident named Hartman in 1835. Apart from cleaning activities, he also conducted research especially on the peak stupa of Borobudur Temple, but unfortunately this research report was never published. Documentation in the form of building drawings and temple reliefs was carried out by Wilson for four years since 1849. While the photo document was created in 1873 by Van Kinsbergen. According to the legend, Borobudur Temple was founded by the architect Gunadharma, but historically it is not certain. Kaspera's opinion is based on the interpretation of inscriptions dated 824 AD and Sri Kahulun in 842 AD inscription. The founder of the Borobudur Temple was Smaratunga, who ruled in 782 to 812 AD during the Sayalendra dynasty. Borobudur Temple was built to honor Mahayana Buddhism. This opinion, which we will clarify. Dumarke's opinion. Borobudur Temple was founded in five stages of development, namely, Stage 1. 780 AD. Stage 2 and 3, 792 AD. Stage 4, 824 AD. Stage 5, 833 AD. The things above that we will clarify, is the true name of Borobudur Temple. Regarding the naming, there are also several opinions including. This is Raffles' opinion. Budor equals the ancient, Boro equals ancient. Budor equals place name, the great Buddha. Boro equals great. Budor equals Buddha, Buddhas are many. Boro equals a lot. Budor equals Buddha. Opinion of Moans. The city of the upholds of the Buddha. Kasparis argues. Derived from the source of the word. The Kamulan Ibumasambara Buddhara, based on a quote from the Sri Kahulunan inscription 842 AD which means a holy building that symbolizes the collection of goodness from the ten levels of the Bodhisattva. Poorbajaraka opinion. Monastery in Budor, Budor equals name of place, village. Sokmano and Studerthyme argue. Bara and Budor mean monastery on the hill. According to Sokmano, Borobudur temple functions as a place of pilgrimage to glorify Mahayana Buddhism and ancestor worship. Those are old opinions that must be clarified. Efforts to restore Borobudur Temple were carried out twice, the first was carried out by the Dutch East Indies government under the leadership of Van Erp and the second was carried out by the Indonesian government chaired by Sokmano. The first restoration, in 1907-1911. The first restoration was fully financed by the Dutch East Indies government. The restoration targets were aimed mostly at the top of the temple, namely the three round terraces and the central stupa. However, because some of the stones were not found again, the top katra of the stupa could not be replaced. 
The restoration of the lower part is more of a patchwork nature such as repairing, leveling the hallway, repairing the walls and balusters without demolition so that it still looks slanted. Conservation efforts have been carried out since the first restoration by the Dutch East Indies government by continuously observing and researching the Borobudur Temple, while the process of damage and weathering of the Borobudur Temple stones caused by various factors continues. And the results of research conducted by a committee formed in 1924 found that the causes of the damage were of three kinds, namely corrosion, mechanical work and the strength of the pressure and stress in the stones themselves. Second Restoration 1973-1983 After the Van Erp restoration effort was successfully completed in 1911, maintenance of the Borobudur Temple continued. Based on a comparison between the conditions at that time and the photos made by Van Erp ten years earlier, it is known that the process of damage to Borobudur Temple continues and is getting worse, especially the relief walls of the stones are damaged due to the influence of the climate. In addition, the temple building was also threatened by damage. With the entry of Indonesia as a member of the United Nations, Indonesia automatically becomes a member of UNESCO. Through this UNESCO institution, Indonesia began to appeal to the international community to help save this very historic building. The effort was successful, with funding from Polita and UNESCO funds, in 1975 a complete restoration began. Because at the level called by the Dutch as Arupadatu the condition was still good, only the lower level had been dismantled. In the demolition, there were three types of work, namely archaeological technology which consisted of dismantling all parts of the Rupadatu, namely four rectangular levels above the base of the temple, civil engineering work, namely installing reinforced concrete foundations to support the Borobudur temple for each level by being given water channels and layers waterproof in its construction. And chemo-archaeological work, namely cleaning and preserving the stones, and finally rearranging the cleaned stones from microorganisms moss, fungi, and other microorganisms to their original shape. Relief. Besides its meaning as a symbol of the universe with a philosophical vertical division including Kamadatu, Rupadatu, and Arupadatu, this is the naming of the old version which we will clarify. Borobudur Temple contains a very noble purpose, this purpose is mandated by the relief of the story. Borobudur Temple has 1,460 story relief panels arranged in 11 rows surrounding the temple building and 1,212 decorative relief panels in the form of decorative reliefs. Relief stories at the level of Kamadatu, the foot of the temple, represent the human world depicting human behavior that is still bound by worldly desires. Note that, this is the old interpretation which interpret the Buddhist version of the teaching. This can be seen on the original foot wall of the temple carved with 160 panels of Karmawibhanga relief depicting the law of cause and effect. This interpretation is based in the Mahakarmawibhanga Indian book which is not completely, the explanation of the reliefs can be explained by the book. The level that has been named, Rupadatu, body of the temple represents the intermediate world, depicting human behavior that has begun to leave worldly desires, but is still bound by a real-world understanding. This interpretation that has been circulating is based on a Buddhist version of understanding, the truth must be clarified. Easy question, when did Buddhist teachings enter Indonesia, which first, Buddhist teachings entered Indonesia, was Borobudur built after Buddhism entered Indonesia? Questions that must be answered academically. At this level 1,300 panels are carved consisting of the reliefs of Lalitavistara, Jataka, Abhidana, and Gandayuha. The following is a brief description of the relief, an old version that has been circulating and should be clarified. 1. Level 1. The upper wall of the relief, named Lalitavistara. Once again explained, the above naming is the Indian version. These 120 relief panels are interpreted, without studying in-depth academic studies. That the reliefs in the interpretation describe the life history of Buddha Gautama starting when the gods in Tushita heaven granted the Bodhisattva's request to come down to the world to become a human named Gautama Buddha. Is it true that such interpretation? What is the name of the person who told the relief maker about Siddhartha Gautama's biography? When did that person come to the Indonesian archipelago earlier? The above questions that must be answered intelligently. Other interpretation stories about the reliefs, namely. Queen Maya. Before becoming pregnant, 
dreaming of accepting the presence of a white elephant in her presence. In Taman Lumbini Ratu Maya gave birth to a son and was named Prince Siddhartha. At birth, Siddhartha was able to walk, and in the first seven steps a lotus flower grew. After giving birth, Queen Maya died, and Siddhartha was taken care of by her aunt Gautami. Is it true that such interpretation? What is the name of the person who told the relief maker about Siddhartha Gautama's biography? Next. As an adult, Siddhartha married Yasodhara who was called the goddess Gopa. In one trip Siddhartha experienced four encounters, namely meeting with blind old beggar, sick person, the dead, makes Siddhartha restless, because people can grow old, suffer, get sick and die. Finally, Siddhartha met a pastor, the pastor's face was peaceful, old age, sickness, and death did not pose a threat to a pastor. Because according to the prediction Siddhartha would become a priest, his father built a magnificent palace for Siddhartha. After experiencing these four encounters, Siddhartha was not at peace living in the palace, finally quietly leaving the palace. Siddhartha decided to become a priest by cutting his hair. The palace clothes are abandoned and wear the clothes of slaves who have died, and are united with the poor. Before meditating, Siddhartha purified himself in the Naranyana river. Siddhartha is happy when a lawnmaker offers a seat made of worn grass. Under the Bodhi tree at the full moon of the month of Waisak, Siddhartha received true enlightenment, since then Siddhartha has become a Buddha in the city of Benares. Once again, is it true that such interpretation? What is the name of the person who told the relief maker about Siddhartha Gautama's biography? When did that person come to the Indonesian archipelago earlier? The above questions that must be answered intelligently. The lower walls of the Manahara and Abadana reliefs. Another thing about the reliefs that have been published at this time. 120 panel The Manahara story depicts the Udanakumaravada story, the story of Prince Sudana's marriage to the angel Manahara. Due to his contribution of saving a dragon, a hunter named Halaka received a lasso from the dragon's parents. One day Halaka saw an angel bathing in a pool, with his reasoning that he managed to ensnare one of the most beautiful angels named Manahara. Because Halaka was not equal to Manahara, Manahara was presented to Prince Sudana, even though Sudana's father did not agree. Many obstacles could not prevent Prince Sudana's marriage to Manahara. The Awadana story tells of the reincarnation of saints, including the story of King Sippi's loyalty to weak creatures. A little bird asked the king of Sippi not to be eaten by the eagle. On the other hand, the eagle asked the king of Sippi to exchange the small bird for the meat of the king of Sippi. After weighing it, it turned out that the weight of the small bird with the Raja Sippi was the same, so the king of Sippi was willing to sacrifice himself to be eaten by an eagle. A leader must have the courage to sacrifice himself for the little people and all living things. Is it true that such interpretation? What is the name of the person who told the story above to the relief maker? When did that person come to the Indonesian archipelago earlier? What book or what book is the guide for making reliefs based on that story? When was the book made, and who brought it to the Indonesian archipelago earlier? The above questions that must be answered intelligently. Lankan Bawa, Animal Story, Jatakamala Relief. 372 Panel Lankan Adas, Animal Story, Jataka Relief. 128 Panel This relief has the meaning of a Jataka story that tells the reincarnation of the Buddha before being born as a human named Prince Siddhartha Gautama. Questions for clarification. What is the name of the person who told the story of Siddhartha Gautama's biography to the relief maker? When did that person come to the Indonesian archipelago earlier? The above questions that must be answered intelligently. Relief interpretation that has been circulating that. This story tends to interpret the incarnation of the Buddha as a virtuous animal with its sacrifice. Jataka stories include the story of monkeys and bulls. The naughty monkey likes to disturb the bull, but the bull is silent. Then the story that has been circulating is as follows. The forest goddess advised the Bantang to fight the monkeys, but the bulls refused to drive the monkeys away for fear that the monkeys would leave the forest and disturb the peace of other animals. Finally, the forest goddess prostrated to the bull because of the bull's attitude in maintaining harmony and peace in the forest. Another Jataka story is the sacrifice of an elephant who offered himself to be eaten by starving refugees. Easy question. What is the name of the person who told the story above to the relief maker? 
When did that person come to the Indonesian archipelago earlier? What book or what book is the guide for making reliefs based on that story? When was the book made, and who brought it to the Indonesian archipelago earlier? The above questions that must be answered intelligently. 2. Level 2. Relief Wall Published Named Gandayuha. 128 Panels. Published Relief Ledge Based in the Indian Version of Jataka Abadana. These 100 panels of relief are interpreted as possibly continuing the life of the Buddha in the past. Several scenes are known again, among others, are in the northwest corner, where the Bodhisattva incarnates as a peacock and is caught, finally giving his teachings. Questions for clarification. What is the name of the person who told the story of Siddhartha Gautama's biography to the relief maker? 3. Level 3. Relief Wall Published Named Gandayuha. 88 Panel. This relief is interpreted as describing the history of Bodhisattva Maitreya as a future Buddha, which is a continuation of the story at level 2. Once again, is it true that such interpretation? What is the name of the person who told the relief maker about Siddhartha Gautama's biography? When did that person come to the Indonesian archipelago earlier? The above questions that must be answered intelligently. Statue. Characters that are interpreted and have been published. Dhyani Buddha, Manusi Buddha, and Bodhisattva. Number of statues. 504 pieces. Details of the location of the statues. At the level already called Rupadhatu, there are 432 statues, the size is getting smaller and smaller and placed in a niche, with details. Terrace 1. 104 statues. Terrace 2. 104 statues. Terrace 3. 88 statues. Terrace 4. 72 statues. Terrace 5. 64 statues. At the published level called Arupadatu there are 72 statues of the same size and are placed in the stupa, with details. Terrace 6. 32 statues. Terrace 7. 24 statues. Terrace 8. 16 statues. At the level that has been interpreted by the Indian version called Rupadatu, there are 432 statues. Named and interpreted as Dhyani Buddha placed in niches in all directions of the cardinal directions. That is, the Dhyani Buddha Aksabhya statue is located on the east side with the hand gesture of Bhumasparsamudra, the Dhyani Buddha statue Ratnasambhava is located on the south side with the attitude of the Varamudra hand, the Dhyani Buddha Amogasiddha statue is located on the north side with the attitude of the Abhayamudra hand, the Dhyani Buddha Wairokana statue on the balustrade level 5 with the Vitarkamudra attitude. Inside the stupas 1, 2 and 3, there is a statue of Dhyani Buddha Varasattva with a Dharmakakramudra hand gesture. Once again, is it true that such interpretation? What is the name of the person who told the relief maker about Siddhartha Gautama's biography? When did that person come to the Indonesian archipelago earlier? The above questions that must be answered intelligently. Lion statue. 32 lion statues. This is interpreted according to Buddhism and must be examined carefully. Interpreted. The lion is the vehicle of the Buddha when ascending to heaven. Simple questions to clarify stories about the interpretation that have been published. Is it true that in Indian Buddhist philosophy there is a term heaven? And the lion is a symbol of strength. To repel evil influences to maintain the sanctity of Borobudur temple. Stupa. The number of stupas is 73, with details of one main stupa. 32 stupas on one circular terrace. 24 stupas on two circular terraces, and 16 stupas on three circular terraces. Question. The oldest stupa shape artifacts found where? Where the teaching philosophy in the form of a stupa as a symbol of religion exists. Is this from India, where the glorious Siddhartha Gautama was born? Let's clarify about all that has been published. Stupa shape. The main stupa is hollow, without open holes. Stupa on circular terrace with open holes. Rhombus holes in circular stupa 1 and two circular holes are rectangular in circular stupa 3. The symbolic meaning of the rhombus hole relates to the philosophy leading to the level of perfection. Symbolic meaning of the rectangular inlaid hole relating to simpler philosophy are perfect than the rhombus form which is still classified as large. Monitoring. After being restored, Borobudur temple does not mean that the temple has been completed. There is no guarantee that Borobudur Temple is free from the process of damage and weathering. Therefore, 
The Borobudur Conservation Center office always monitors and evaluates on an ongoing basis. For example, monitoring through the activity of observing the growth of microorganisms, observing the stability of the temple stones, evaluating the structure of the temple, observing geohydrology, observing the drainage system, analyzing the environmental impact, and so on. Protection efforts are carried out by zoning at the Borobudur Temple site, namely Zone 1. Sacred Area, for protection of monuments and archaeological environment, radius 200 meters. Zone 2. Archaeological Tourism Park Zone, to provide park facilities and protection of the historical environment, radius 500 meters. Zone 3. Land Use Zone with Special Rules, to control the development of the area around the tourist park, radius 2 kilometers. Zone 4. Protection Zone of Historical Areas, for the maintenance and prevention of damage to historical areas, radius 5 kilometers. Zone 5. National Archaeological Park Zone, for archaeological surveys in large areas and prevention of damage to monuments that are still buried, radius 10 kilometers. Zone 1 and Zone 2 are owned by the government. Zone 1 is managed by the Borobudur Study and Conservation Center. Zone 1 is managed by P.T. Taman Wasada Kandi Borobudur, Prambanan and Ratu Boko. In Zone 2 there are also tourist facilities. Car park, ticket booth, information center, museum, kiosk, and others. Zones 3, 4, and 5 are owned by the community, but their use is controlled by the local government. 3. Review. Borobudur's history notes throughout this. Is it true that the Sailendra house built Borobudur? Review in paragraph. From several writings circulating about the historical records of Borobudur, the writer presents the data taken from the Borobudur Conservation Center based in its official website, as a study material to clarify the notes and reference materials. Text or writing that exists so far. According to the legend, Borobudur Temple was founded by the architect Gunadharma, but historically it is not certain. Kaspera's opinion is based on the interpretation of inscriptions dated 824 AD and Sri Kahulunan 842 AD inscription. The founder of the Borobudur Temple was Smaratunga, who ruled in 782 to 812 AD during the Sailendra dynasty. We will examine the underlined words or sentences. Borobudur Temple. Really, Borobudur is called a temple. Indonesia Dictionary. The word, temple, are Ancient buildings made of stone as a place of worship, storing the ashes of kings. The word, temple means, a building for worshipping gods. The word, wihara, monasteries inhabited by monks, Buddhists. Word, pagoda, multi-story tower whose roof is on each level, usually built as a temple or memorial, for example in Myanmar, Sri Lanka, China, Japan and India. In order to strengthen the consideration of the study and study of Borobudur, let's look at the statement of a monk. Based on writings in the mass media, Borobudur Temple is not a place of worship. Written and published on Saturday, April 3, 2010, 2252 WIB. Magaling, Compass.com. Chairman of the Fatwa of the Indonesian Sangha Grand Conference, Kasi, Bhiksu Bhadra Rusi said that Borobudur Temple is not a place of worship or prayer such as a church, mosque and temple, but a monument to the attainment of a human's inner enlightenment. Borobudur Temple is a mandala. Don't worry that other religions will be displaced if Borobudur is revived, he said in Magaling, Friday. Bhadra Rusi said this before becoming a speaker at the workshop, Creative Promotion of Borobudur Culture Values, held by Indonesia, World Heritage Youth Network, Indoan, at the Manahara Hotel, Borobudur Temple Complex. Bhadra Rusi said that Borobudur is only a monument because Buddhist people like to make monuments. According to him, Borobudur is an institution or holy land for Buddhism like other religions, namely Mecca and the Vatican. He said that Borobudur has many reliefs that teach human values as taught by the Buddha, including generosity, moral discipline, patience, enthusiasm, concentration, and wisdom. Indoan coordinator Lenny Hadayat said that this workshop was a continuation of Indoan's 10,000 handprint campaign activities at the Borobudur Temple Complex in 2008. Behind the Borobudur building, he said, there are noble values of the Indonesian nation. However, 
Because there is still a lack of knowledge about the basic values of Borobudur Temple and lack of information for tourists, in the long run it does not have a significant impact on the reputation of Borobudur. If the stakeholders do not know the basic values of the Borobudur Temple, it is feared that it has the potential to lose one of the roots of the historical world cultural heritage for tourists, the Indonesian people, and even the world community, he said. As a form of participation and active role, Indoin is supported by the Directorate General of History and Antiquities, the Ministry of Culture and Tourism, and PT Taman Wasada Kandi Borobudur to organize this workshop for Borobudur tour guides. He said that the strategic position of Borobudur tour guides is the spearhead of communication, information and education that can build a positive reputation for tourists and all national and international stakeholders. Editor. Jody. The conclusion of the clarification of sentences, Borobudur Buddhist temple is. Referring to the word explanation based in the Big Indonesian Dictionary, it can be concluded that the word temple is an ancient building made of stone as a place of worship, storage of the ashes of kings. In an explanation of the word literacy text. Temple. Temple. Pagoda. In Borobudur there are no areas or places that are usually used for worship or worship of gods, it can be concluded that Borobudur is not a place for worship such as temples, temples, mosques, churches or temples. So we can conclude that Borobudur is not a temple, Borobudur is not a place of worship or prayer as such. Churches, mosques, and temples, because there are no areas or places for worship such as Buddhist or Hindu places of worship, for example pagodas, temples and temples. With this understanding, the statement that Borobudur is a temple falls. Borobudur is not a temple. We will have already underlined the word or sentence. Borobudur was founded by the architect Gunadharma. In the written historical records that have existed so far about when and who built Borobudur, such things have been considered correct and standard by the general public, including the following. The architect who created Borobudur, named Gunadharma. Really, the architect who created Borobudur, named Gunadharma. Gunadharma Architects. Little is known about this mysterious architect named Gunadharma, whose name is based more on Javanese fairy tales and legends than historical inscriptions. The Gunadharma legend is related to the folklore of the Menore Hills, which resemble a lying body. This local fairy tale tells that Gunadharma's lying body turned into the Menore Hills. Of course this legend is only fiction and fairy tales. In records circulating so far written Borobudur in Arsateki by Gunadharma. Who is Gunadharma? Is it true that Gunadharma designed Borobudur? Borobudur. Not designed or designed by Gunadharma. The name Gunadharma is not in the lineage of the Sailendra house as well as in the names in the archipelago kingdom. The name Gunadharma is in the mythos story in the Javanese ethnic area which is the name that the Javanese people gave to the hills of the Kedu area of central Java, which formed the position of a human sleeping on his side. So the name Gunadharma is not the name of a human being, it is a nickname that the Javanese people give to the hills that make humans sleep on their side. Gunadharma the name of Javanese mythos. And there was no way a building was built by a figure whose name only existed in mythos. In conclusion, Gunadharma did not design Borobudur, Something that is less than perfect if a real physical object is annotated by making a statement built by a human figure whose origin and existence is unknown, and only a mythos. We will have already underlined the word or sentence. Opinion Casparus. Based on the interpretation of the inscription dated 824 AD and the inscription of Sri Kahulun in 842 AD, the founder of Borobudur Temple was Smaratunga who ruled from 782 to 812 AD during the Sayalendra dynasty. When was Borobudur built? Until now, it is not certain when this temple was built and who built it, so that the age of Borobudur is not known for sure. General response so far. The founder of Borobudur was Wangsa Sailendra, which embraced Mahayana Buddhism, in the 8th century AD. We examine whether it is true. Follow in part 3 next. By Santosaba.